Hello, this is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosagie, Lagos, Nigeria. Good evening, God girls. And we have been looking at the life of Joseph, a purpose-driven man, basically all through this month. And it has been a wonderful, wonderful time, right? It's been great learning about Joseph. The underlying title to Joseph Part 1, Joseph Part 2, Joseph Part 3, I believe we did six parts to Joseph, has been on the road to Goshen. So tonight I'm happy to tell you that the title of today's message is On the Road to Goshen Part 1. It's been so wonderful getting into his story and seeing how powerful and magnificent and loving God is. God loves you. But sometimes he gives you some tough love, you know? He really takes you through some stuff. And we have learned it through the life of Joseph. So tonight we're beginning to wrap up his story. But I do thank you for coming along on this journey and really being encouraged by the life of Joseph, a truly spectacular man. He was the man. And I've told you several times, he's my favorite, second favorite, favorite, second favorite, favorite, second favorite (laughs) man in the Old Testament. King David is my favorite. But Joseph, Joseph was coming in as a strong second. But, you know, you kind of like someone who who just doesn't seem to make a mistake, right? When you, we we're looking at the life of Joseph, he just seems to be so perfect. It's like, Joseph, can't you have a bad day? Joseph, can't you, like, sin against God? Joseph, come on. But he's one of those characters that was presented in the Word of God as an almost perfect individual. And he's such an encouragement to us, you know, because we struggle with imperfections every day. And as much as I love King David... He made a fatal mistake, all right? He made a fatal mistake, and it's on the record in the Word of God that though he was a man after God's own heart, he messed up big time. So um, King David really reminds me of the fact that I am human, and I can mess up big time too. But Joseph, on the other hand, is an encouragement to me that, you know what? It's possible to just never, ever mess up big time, live this life, and then go to heaven, just like Joseph. So I just, I just love both men. I, I really like. You can't read the whole, t- the Old Testament without, you know, running into King David. The Book of Psalms, for goodness sake, the Book of Psalms. Oh yeah, I love King David. And then, okay, 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 okay. I'm just so excited. I'm always so excited. I don't know what's up with me. All right, I do know what's up with me. Jesus is. I'm excited about Jesus. And it's my job to get you excited about Jesus and let you know that he loves you and you were created for his glory and he has called you to live a purpose-driven life. We're going into chapter 46. And when we concluded last week, Jacob had just been told by his sons that Joseph was actually alive. And so we begin this chapter where Jacob is now aware that Joseph has been alive, you know, and it's surreal. It's really, really surreal that a son you thought was dead for 22 years, 22 years, Jacob thought that Joseph was dead and gone dead and gone, but Joseph was in God's hands being prepared for such a great destiny, being raised by God to be truly instrumental in keeping the people of God together. And who are the people of God? The nation of Israel. No, you know, Jacob's name is Israel, right? Yes, the nation of Israel comes from Jacob. Jacob and his sons, the 12 tribes of Israel, they come from Jacob. So this is the beginning, the new beginning for the nation of Israel. You know, it's it's a it's a serious 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 aspect of the word of God and what God did had had to take Joseph through and prepare him for this 
important duty. God's people. And I've told you before that if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, what do you see? All you see is a God who wants his people. He just wants his people to come on back to him. That's it. God wants his people to come on back to him. And if you are created by God, you are created by God to be his. But the choice is up to you. Do you want to be a child of God or a child of the devil? Yeah, and if you don't believe in God, you certainly believe in the devil. So God just wants his people back. And he took Joseph through all this, through all this so he could be instrumental during this terrible time on earth, this terrible famine. All right? So Jacob, let's start reading. So Israel, as I told you, Jacob's new name is Israel. So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. So he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. Now, it's an interesting fact that, you know, God is described as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was a patriarch. He was a man that was walking directly with God, just like Isaac did and just like Abraham did. Before we get into the time of Moses and when God starts to raise the prophets, Elijah and all of them, right? Before we get to that stage in the Bible, God dealt with the patriarch. So Jacob was a patriarch. He walked with God. But for 22 years, God did not clue Jacob in that this son that you love so much, this son that you love so much is actually alive. God let him grieve. And truly, if you lose a child, it's not something you get over. Anyone who, who's lost a loved one, be it a parent or a sibling, it's not something that it's always going to be part of you that you've lost this person especially someone that you love so much. So Jacob mourned for his favorite son for 22 years, but God was silent on that matter. He didn't tell Jacob that, Jacob, you don't need to mourn about this boy because I've just separated you for a while, but surely, surely you see him again. There are just some aspects of your life that you've just been suffering and you feel that God is silent and you feel like God doesn't care. I'm here to tell you that God is aware, God cares, but God has his time for everything. That's why I've told you all several times that don't let your problems overwhelm you because your problems are there to distract you from God or chase you towards God. Choose to let your problems chase you to God and not take you away from God because that's what the enemy wants. You know, this is the God who gives and the God who takes away. That's just what it is. All right. So Jacob had his beloved son taken from him in such a vicious manner because he thought that Joseph was dead. A wild animal killed Joseph, you know, and he mourned for a long, long time. But even though he walked so closely with God, God did not let him know that Joseph was alive. So yesterday, one of the God girls was talking about marriage and used her friend as an example, the friend got married and then a month later lost her husband and so this god girl was saying that she believes that nothing evil will happen to her that you know basically as a child of god such a thing will not happen to her and i quickly had to correct her i quickly had because i was one of those christians too that you know oh i'm a child of god it's going to be good for me nothing bad will happen to me because i'm a child of god if anyone is teaching you that, that's the wrong teaching. It's wrong. Okay? It's wrong. We're on the road to Goshen. On the road to Goshen, there is heartbreak. The heart of Jacob was broken when he was separated from his favorite son. The heart of Joseph was broken when he was separated from his family. On the road to Goshen. On the road 
on that place that you're heading to. You're heading to a good place that God has for you. But you're going to go through some stuff. Even if, God forbid, yes, I wouldn't want this for you either. To get married and then lose your husband within a month. It's terrible, right? But what about the widows? Does a widow really have a choice in the matter? She can be a wife for two years. She can be a wife for 10 years. She can be a wife for 15 years. Okay? And then the husband passes away and she has a long life to live. Is God cruel? Is God wicked? On your purpose-driven life, you're going to go through some things that you wish you could, you wish that you didn't have to go through. That's why I say all the time that there is purpose to your pain. I used to think like that. I was naive like Joseph. I was this good Christian church girl, and I thought, oh, it's all good because I'm a good Christian church girl. No, it wasn't all good. It wasn't all good. I experienced betrayal. I experienced pain and shame. I experienced almost insanity. I've experienced it on my purpose-driven path. And I've told you all several times that if I didn't go through all that, I wouldn't be here today ministering to you. It was part of God's purpose for me to go through that pain, shame, despair, so I could understand it, so I could understand it and come back and minister to people who are going through it. I've been there and God brought me out. Joseph was not in the pit or the palace forever. Remember, he was in the pit before they sold him off to slavery, right? All right. Then he got to Egypt. And it was good for a while, but he ended up in jail. But he eventually came out of jail, right? On the road to Goshen. It's a winding road. There's good things and bad things that will happen to you on your purpose-driven life. But it is not an excuse to turn away from God. Jacob had a hard life. Jacob had it really hard from the very beginning. If you want to go back and study his life, we've studied elements of his life. Where he wrestled with God for a new name. We've seen that where he was tricked into marrying Leah. That in itself was earth shattering. Where you're denied and deprived the person you love and want to get married to. Just because someone wants to enslave you. Jacob had a hard life. But was Jacob not a child of God? Yes, he was. You and I are children of God. Please don't get it into your minds that because you're a Christian, is you're going to be living a life of cruise control. It's all good. Uh -uh -uh. Something's coming for you. Something is coming for you. Something bad is coming for you. And it is part of your purpose-driven life. I'm Pastor B. I will tell you the truth. I'm not here to give you a message to make you feel good about yourself. I'm here to give you a message that paints a real picture for you. There is pain and suffering in the Christian walk. The Son of God himself was not denied pain, shame, and humiliation. So who are you and who am I to have a life that's free of pain? So please, if any of you have that naive mindset, which I had until God took me through some stuff, I'm here to break it today. Bad things will happen to you. I've told you single God girls a lot of times, be prayerful. Because you don't even know the battles that are waiting for you in marriage. Be prayerful and go into your marriage with God. It's not about how much your husband loves you or how beautiful you are. All these things fade away. It is the love of God that keeps a husband and wife together. It is God that will keep the two of you together. And things will happen in your marriage. Does a woman plan to be barren? You don't know if you're barren yet until you get married, right? You don't know if your husband has a low sperm count until you get married, right? I'm not cursing you. I'm just telling you the truth of the matter. You don't know what's waiting for you. So how can you just walk through life with stars in your eyes and say, Oh, I'm a child of God. It's all good. Please wake up. The road to Goshen 
I see two hearts that were broken. Joseph's heart was broken and Jacob's heart was broken. I'm painting a real picture for you here. The purpose-driven life comes with pain. We're taking the time to study Joseph. But think, think hard and deep of the characters used by God in the Bible. Were any of them free of pain? Whew, Lord help me before I deviate from this message. All right. So God tells Jacob something. He promises him, don't be afraid to go down into Egypt, meaning I've already gone there and it's all good in Egypt. So Jacob, there's no fear. Number two, I will make of you a great nation. I told you the nation of Israel is about to be established through Jacob. All right. Three, I will go down with you to Egypt and I will surely bring you up again. Now you need to understand how God speaks. When God makes a promise on your life, you may not fully understand his promise. Have any of you felt that where God has promised you something good and it's like, but why am I still going through this? But yet that scripture keeps coming to you that don't worry, it's, it's still good. Have you ever felt that way? God does not lie, but the way God works things out in our lives, woo, he doesn't think the way you do. Or he doesn't do things the way that you want him to be done. He does things his way. He's sovereign. He's a sovereign God and you are a lesser being. You know what God is telling Jacob here? He's telling Jacob, Jacob, you're going to die in Egypt. And how do I know that? Of course, I've read the story. And number two, the final thing that God tells Jacob, and Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. Joseph will close your eyes in death. So God is telling Jacob that, Jacob, you're going into the final part of your purpose-driven life. Your life is coming to a close. Thank you for being my faithful servant. But I'm going to take it from here. Even if you're not alive to see it, I will make of you a great nation. But you will surely die in Egypt. All right, you're going to die there. And Joseph will be there with you. All right, so God now mentions Joseph. God has been silent on Joseph's matter for 22 years. But God now mentions Joseph to Jacob. God is amazing. He just does what he wants. But in these, God is assuring Jacob that I'm with you. You're headed in the right direction. All shall be well. You'll be reconciled with Joseph, but you're going to die there. But it's okay, even if you die there, a great nation is coming out of you. God is awesome. Keep walking with God, even if you're going through suffering. Just know that when you get to heaven, there's no suffering in heaven. You think Jesus is suffering in heaven? Oh, no. He suffered enough on the cross. He's up there in heaven exalted. He's the son of God exalted, given the name that is above all names. I love that part of scripture. When God truly exalts Christ because of everything Christ went through for you and I. So when you and I make it to heaven, ah, no more suffering. It's all going to be a good, happy time in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So let's stay faithful to God. So after God was talking to Jacob, Jacob arose with Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little ones, and their wives, and the carts which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So they took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt, Jacob and all his descendants with him. Jacob took every descendant because God had given him clear direction. Go! Go! And isn't it interesting that God had ensured Joseph was the one that will create this place, this place, this Goshen for Jacob? You see, you need to understand something. Joseph had to go ahead to prepare Goshen for his father. But in order for that to happen, there had to be a separation between him and his father. They had to experience suffering for this to happen. God, girls, God has something beautiful planned for you. Please, don't be discouraged no matter what you are going through. God is taking you to your Goshen. Your Goshen is a place of rest in the midst of adversity. In the land of Egypt, a strange land, Goshen was 
a beautiful separate little place just established for Jacob and his family to populate and become that nation. It was a beautiful place with good pasture for them to graze their animals. It was a blessed place, even though there was a terrible famine going on during that time. And this is what you need to understand. Even if the whole world is crashing down around you, as a child of God, your case is different. As long as you have God, your Goshen is going to be wherever you are with God. Are you listening to me? Yes, wherever you are with God, as a faithful child of God in the will of God, your Goshen is right there with you. Do you understand me? Your Goshen is right there with you. Please do not look at the people around you and say, Oh, you can't live in this part of the world because it's so violent, it's so terrible. But meanwhile, God sent you there. That is your Goshen. You will prosper. While people around you are saying that land won't prosper, remember there was famine going on in Egypt. Yet, Jacob and his descendants prospered in Goshen. In Goshen is your prosperity. As a faithful, obedient child of God, wherever God sends you to, know that that is your Goshen. Know that you will prosper, even if everyone around you is going through crazy times. And yes, you've been through your crazy times with God. But as a faithful child of God, you are established right there in your Goshen. Be aware of this. Don't be afraid no matter what's going on around you. Remember when the hurricanes were heading towards Florida and it was terrible last year? And we were like, oh, Hurricane Irma. And I said, no, we got to pray about this. And everywhere it said it was going to go, it didn't go. Because right there was the Goshen for the God Girls. We have WGG Lena in Jacksonville, Florida. We have God Girl Miracle in Boca, Boca, Florida. Okay, we also have WGG Nadine who was in the Bahamas, all these places where they were situated, the news was saying a hurricane was coming for them, but they held on to God. And in the midst of that hurricane, that place was a place of peace and rest for them. Even though there, it was being predicted that a hurricane was coming, they were in their Goshen. They were where God had planted them. So hurricane or no hurricane, God was going to stand up for them. As a faithful child of God, hold on to God and do not be afraid. So the scripture goes on to tell you the descendants of Jacob and his whole family that actually went into Egypt with him. And it tells us in verse 27 that all the people of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. There were 70. Big family, right? But this was the nation of Israel, the beginning of the nation of Israel. So, God had created a new place for them. Goshen, right there in Egypt. Jacob settles in Goshen. He sends Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. It's interesting that he had Judah point things out. Remember, it was Judah who actually made Joseph break down and just come out of this undercover mode and say, you know what, I'm done being an undercover brother. I'm actually your brother, and I've just been testing you all. It was the plea that Judah made. It was just like the final thing for Joseph to just release and reveal himself to his brothers. Also, it was Judah that had suggested to the brothers that let's not kill Joseph, let's sell him into slavery instead. And remember when we go back to the teaching that I taught you all last year of Leah, the unwanted one, the wife of Jacob, mother of Judah. Remember what I told you about Judah, right? Judah means praise the Lord. All her priests, she had three sons before Judah. And the meaning of their names was, now my husband will love me, and things like that. Now my husband will notice me. But once she got to Judah, it was like, I praise the Lord. This baby was all about God. This was not about Jacob loving me. This is between me and God. God, I praise you. I praise you. 
that you've opened my womb again to give another son to Jacob, but this time this child is for you. So when you go back to the beginning of Judah's life and you notice these little things here and there, remember that Jesus came through the tribe of Judah, right? Remember that King David was from the tribe of Judah. All right, so Judah, Judah, Judah is establishing himself as one of um, Jacob's great sons. So that's why I'm just quickly backtracking and telling you that it's interesting that Jacob defers to Judah. Out of all his sons, it's telling Judah, Judah, uh, show me the way to Goshen, right? So that's an amazing aspect of his character as a leader and how he's already showing himself as a truly great son of Jacob and a great tribe in the nation of Israel. Verse 29, so Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. And he presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Yeah, Joseph, please take your time while you're crying, crying on your father's neck. The Bible says a good while. It's not easy. 22 years, left Jacob as a boy at the age of 17. Now you're a full grown man at the age of 39. Um, yes, you're still going to cry because it was heartbreak to be wrenched away from a father that you love so much and a brother that you love so much and a home that you were just growing up in. And, you know, it was, it was terrible, right, Joseph? Your heart was broken so God could use you. Many of us, our hearts are going to be broken in order for God to use us. Remember when Super Eva was sharing the story of her family experiencing so many losses so many deaths, and she's just wondering, God, what is happening? But do you see her when she makes a comment on the God Girl platform? Do you see what she has become? Out of her broken heart, God pushed her closer to him. Now she's living a purposeful life. This is a woman, and I say, you know what? I think you've memorized the whole Bible. She's always spitting out verses, scriptures. But I'm telling you, Super Eva is on fire for God. And how did that happen? Her heart got broken. Why am I so passionate about what God has given to me? My heart got broken, ripped into shreds. Yeah. So when your heart has been broken, don't turn away from God. You better turn to God and let God show you your purpose. I'm living my purpose and I'm thanking God that my heart was broken. It'll get to that point that you thank God for that broken heart. Because you need to wake up and see God and know that this life will soon be over. Stop living for yourself. Live for God. Live for God. Stop putting other things over God as more important in your life. Your life is all about God because God is all about you. And through the mercy of God, a father and son are reconciled after 22 years. And Jacob was so happy, and he just looks at Joseph and says, Now let me die, as I have seen your face, because you are still alive. Because Jacob is so happy. I mean, there's, I mean, this is it. This is all he needs. He doesn't need to live anymore. He's seen Joseph. Joseph is all right. Hey, I'm ready to die, Lord. But God wasn't ready for Jacob to die. So God will bless you, God, girl. God is going to bless you. I'm sorry your heart has been broken. I'm sorry you've gone through some terrible things. But it's all part of your purpose-driven life. So take that pain, package it, go back to God and say, Lord, show me how to use this pain to your glory. I will not sit here and let this pain destroy me. I'm going to rise up and fulfill the destiny that you have called me to. That's what you go back and tell God. Quit crying. Quit thinking that God doesn't love you. He loves you. He's just teaching you about life. And preparing something for you that eh, he may not have wanted to go into. I mean, Joseph would never have chosen to go through this path, I'm sure. And I certainly wouldn't have chosen to go into this kind of ministry, right? If God had selected me from the beginning and said, Pastor Bella, choose which ministry you will go into. And I'm knowing that. If he's calling you to a ministry, he's going to take you through that stuff to teach you about that ministry. Uh, I wouldn't have chosen this one. <laughs> I wouldn't have. I'd have been too selfish. I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to go through that kind of pain. So uh, -uh. let me choose some other kind of ministry. But God chose this one for me. And he had to make sure my heart was broken. In order to find out who I was in him. It was a painful lesson. 
a terrible lesson, but it woke me up. And that's why I do what I do. I love what I'm doing for God. I'm living a purpose-driven life. But he had to wake me up. He had to. God will take you through some stuff. Don't think the road to Goshen is all sweet, sweet, sweet. You're going to go through some stuff. But you will have rest as long as you have God. Good things are coming. Trust God. Love God. So Joseph then tells his brothers, I'm going to go tell Pharaoh that you're here. And I'm going to tell Pharaoh your occupation, your shepherds. And he's teaching them about Pharaoh. Joseph is very wise. He's teaching them about the Egyptians. He says something very important in verse 34. That when Pharaoh asks them what your occupation is, you shall say your servant's occupation has been with livestock from our youth even till now, both we and also our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. For every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. So... Joseph is basically letting them know that family, I know you all are shepherds, right? But here in Egypt, the Egyptians don't like shepherds. They don't like them. But that's going to work in your favor because the land I'm going to give you in Egypt will keep you separate from all that discrimination. Goshen, the Egyptians are basically going to leave you alone because they don't like you, the fact that you're shepherds. So you're going to have your independence here. Even though you're in this foreign land, you're going to have a land, a blessed land. A piece of this land has been preserved for you. It's blessed by God for you. It is Goshen. So in chapter 47, Joseph goes to Pharaoh and uh, introduces them to Pharaoh. And it's just wonderful as Joseph with wisdom situates his family in Egypt. All right. So Jacob when uh, Pharaoh meets Jacob, Pharaoh asks Jacob, how old are you? And Jacob says, the days of my pilgrimage, this is verse 9, are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life. And they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers and the days of their pilgrimage. Jacob has lived 130 years. And he's telling Pharaoh that I've lived a hard life. I've seen a lot of bad stuff happen in my life. And you have to go back to, Jacob went through a lot. I mean, what? With Laban? And Esau, and you and I will go through a lot. That's why you should be thankful for every situation you're in. The Bible says in everything give thanks because your life could have been so much more worse. Your trial could have been so much more worse. So thank God. Thank God for his grace upon your life. God loves you. So Joseph situates his father and his brothers, gives them Goshen. Uh, that's verse 11. That's Goshen right there. They didn't call it Goshen in that verse, but the land of Rameses, it's actually Goshen. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread, according to the number in their families. And I've told you bread means food. Remember, the famine is still going on strong. All right? So the rest of the chapter talks about the famine and how it's really, really become so bad that the Egyptians are just like, you know what, Joseph... We're giving you all the money. Money is simply useless at this point. We're giving you our livestock. There's nothing else to give you so we can get food. So you know what? We're going to give ourselves to you. We're going to just buy us as, as basically slaves because we need to eat. Okay? Verse 20, Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. For every man of the Egyptians sold his field because the famine was severe upon them. So the land became Pharaoh's. It's just interesting how Joseph was the one running everything. Joseph was the leader raised by God. In this crucial time of famine where people were ready to do anything just to survive, the Egyptians basically sold their freedom. Like, you know what? We're Pharaoh's servants. We need to eat. And God had raised Joseph for this time. God had raised a child of God for this time. So God, girl, just know that as bad as the world is, God is raising you and I for this time. Please stay faithful to God. God used Joseph magnificently in the life of the Egyptians and also in the life of his family. But in order for Joseph to do that, he had to go through the training school of God. Remember, I've told you that God is your mentor. Yes, he has provided me as a mentor to you, and I'm sure you probably have other mentors. But don't forget that God is your overall mentor. He knows when the season in your life is going to be over. You can't rush it. When you're in God's training school, you got to go through the process. He's a God of process. If it was up to Joseph, he wouldn't have stayed in jail that long, right? 
but he had to stay in jail two more years because it was part of his training, his leadership training, his spiritual maturity training, because God knew that once he came out of jail, he was going to be catapulted into an exalted position where he would have all the power in Egypt. He's the one running the show. He's like Pharaoh's spokesman now. Everything Joseph is doing, he's basically ruling Egypt. He's administering Egypt. This is power. This is serious power. And some people who start out right with God, when God takes them to a place of fame and power, they forget about God. So that's why I really love this man, Joseph, because every level God took Joseph to, he stayed grounded. He was not proud. He was not prideful. And you can see in the way he dealt with his brothers, because if he was full of pride, he would have had a revenge against them. He would have dealt with them or probably killed them all. For what they did to his life. But Joseph stayed grounded in God. You and I need to stay grounded. Read your Bible every day. Pray to God. Stay in constant communication with God. Stay in constant communion with God. Because God is taking you to somewhere of great power and exaltation. Please do not forget God when you get to that place. In order to enjoy your Goshen, you better stay close to God. You better stay faithful to God. Don't turn away from God. Learn that from the life of Joseph. Learn that from the life of Jacob. Do not turn away from God no matter how hard your life is. Jacob told the Pharaoh that he had a hard life, 130 years of life. My life has been hard. But he didn't turn away from God. God, girls, you're going to go through some stuff. Don't turn away from God. Turn to God. No matter what you go through, turn to God. Stay with God. Learn that from the life of Joseph. He stayed with God. Come what may, in the good times, in the bad times, Joseph stayed with God. All right? So, let's quickly wrap up this chapter. So, Israel, verse 27. Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen. And they had possessions there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So, the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. They prospered in Egypt. They prospered in their Goshen. You will prosper in your Goshen. It doesn't matter what you go through. You will be fine as long as you are in God. You will prosper. From verse 29 to 31, Jacob is getting ready to die. And he tells Joseph, Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. Remember when God said, I'll bring you out of Egypt? Yes. This is about to happen. So we'll continue on Thursday as we wrap up On the Road to Goshen, Part 2. God, girls, remember this. God loves you, and I love you. This is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosage, Lagos, Nigeria, Ultimate God Girl. God bless you.